These are specimens of the Madagascan hissing cockroach or the Madagascar hissing cockroach. This is Gromfa dorina portentosa. You can see some variation in the colors of the individuals here. It is my suspicion that all of the ones in the United States, minus maybe one or two cultures at universities or zoos, I think maybe Orin McMonagall might have a pure strain of them, not really sure, but I suspect that the majority of them are hybrids, and you'll see a lot of variation in the colors of them. This one here is particularly interesting. We're going to be looking at six different species of Madagascan hissing cockroaches today. Only one trades under that common name, but say six species of Madagascan or Madagascar hissing cockroaches because they are all the ones we're going to look at today from the island of Madagascar. These ones are the ones that trade under the name though. The males have these horns, these bumps up here on that part of the body that's called the pronotum. You can see that the head tucks safely underneath that part of the thorax. and we'll probably hear some of them hiss off and on. I'm going to put these portentosa back at this point and show you one of the other species we have here today. I'm going to move on now to the whitehorn hissers. This is a slightly larger species probably on average the largest species in the hobby. Occasionally, some of the other species will throw ginormous males. But on average, these wide horn hissers, Grumpha dorina oblongonoda, are the largest. Now, these aren't necessarily the largest specimens of the species, but you can see that they're a little larger than the portentosa that we looked at a moment ago. Same genus different species. And you can see the male there, bumps on his pronotum are larger than in the one that we looked at for the last species. And then the female here without the horns, very thick bodied, these of course hiss. All of the ones that we look at today are capable of hissing. And they do that by forcing air in and out of their spiracles. You hear it? Another thing you will notice on the males is that their antennae are lined with fine CT. Those pale hairs. And I can probably find a young nymph of the species here. This one is not a particularly young nymph, slightly larger. I'd say that one's about an inch and a half. And for comparison's sake, here is what I believe is a first instar nymph, one that hatched very recently. I shouldn't say hatched. They give live birth. You will often see the females of the species. We may see one today, not sure. If we're lucky. They will extrude the egg case out from the tip of the abdomen. And it's a long, skinny, about this long, um, oatheca. And it will look yellow and sort of gel-like. Sometimes you'll see them lying on the bottoms of cages, too. And the females will poke those out the tip of their abdomen and expose them to the air, and that will help in their incubation. And I would say about 30 of them might hatch out from there on average. The next species that we're going to take a look at here is Princessia van Werbeckei. 
and I'm just going to pull out this piece of cork bark here because there's quite a few on it and it might be a little tricky to pull them off. These ones here, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say these are five years old, these particular ones. This male here in particular, he's got a very discolored pronotum there. And uh, this is really one of my favorite of the species of hissing cockroaches. Their coloration to me and their size is just really spectacular. Plus, being in the genus Princessia, that just sounds cool because most of the others are um, Elliptorhina or um, Gromphodorhina. And you can see a younger nymph in there too, but... I think the colors are showing up pretty well here under this light. And sometimes these ones throw really, really big males. It's a weird looking princessia. A malt. Let's see if we can see the split. There, right down the middle of the back, where the animal emerged. And then there it is, pale. It will harden up here over the course of the next couple hours, darken a bit. The gray edges are pretty cool. The next ones I will show you are called Europoda insignis, the flat horn hissers. And I think I just said the last species might be my favorite, but these are my other favorite. Really, really like these. They're called flat horns because they are very flat bodied. Um, and some of the younger specimens have really, really beautiful coloration too. You can see those little paler spots on the sides of the body there. And then sometimes these two throw really, really big males. This is my largest male at the moment. You can see the shape of the pronotum there, sort of a trapezoid type shape. And it extends up just past the head on either side. It's a little unusual for them to have this sort of dusky coloration here. Um, this is probably another very, very old specimen. And I don't know if you can really see how flat this specimen is but they are flat horn hissers and um, I just really, really like their shape. And uh, in the case of the half-grown nymphs, the coloration is really pretty too. Here's another pretty decent sized male. You can hear that one there. I put him down and now he's going to throw his little hissy fit. What a, what a good performer you are. And uh, I don't know if this is the one that we had picked up earlier, but the colors on it are really nice. And go in there a little closer. The hissers, they hold on really well. They can climb glass. And also any textured surface you can see in this shot they have those two little hook-like tarsi on the tip of each leg, and then they have little pads also that allow them to climb smooth surfaces. So those are flat horn hissers. And next we will look at the Javan hissing roaches, also sometimes called the Javan beauty and probably more popularly known as Halloween hissers because of their black and orange coloration. And here's a paler looking specimen. Very nice colors. This is Elliptorhina javanica. And they also originate in Madagascar. I don't know if it's true or not. I swear I read something one time that said that they had established in parts of Asia, perhaps down by Java, perhaps in Indonesia somewhere. Not really sure, but um, you can see 
that this one is a lot paler than this one here. Definitely has more of the black and sort of orange coloration. You're a very stripy species. Here's a pretty minor male for comparison's sake. You can see that he has the bumps there on his pronotum. A very attractive species. Um, as far as ones that are fairly regularly available, these ones might be the most popular because of their coloration and I suspect also because of their common name being the Halloween Hissers. Pretty great name. And then the and final species that I currently have in culture are these ones here. They are called black tiger hissers. Now, tiger hissers are the species Grumpha dorina grandidieri. And um, this particular container right here, I'm gonna freehand this for a second. Um, I've had this, I mean, I've had all of these containers forever, but uh, this one here I got from a guy. It's a pretty cool container. I've kept them, this one species in here for a really long time. Um, you can see that the nymphs climb up here, but there's a styrofoam lining right in here that pushes up against this edge right here. And so none of them can escape. Um, and, uh, I got this particular container, you know, some, sometimes we have the memories for where we got things and uh, this container sort of has sentimental value to me because a guy who passed away a few years ago, he had been using this container and uh, along with his roach collection, this was passed on to me after he passed away. Um, Dinosaur Jim discovered way back when the largest dinosaur at the time that had ever been discovered. His dad uh, did a lot of work um, with Harvard in creating a system for, I think, creating molds of dinosaurs. And they went on a lot of digs to sort of revolutionized the way dinosaurs were displayed. I don't recall the story exactly, but the interesting thing about it for me was that while he was out on a dig with his dad as a child, my friend Jim actually was the one who discovered the largest dinosaur ever. And, uh, but it was on his dad's expedition. <laughs> so it was pretty cool to, cool to know him and to uh, think about him. Now, every time I open this particular cage, so black tiger hissers, um, these ones are not very commonly kept. Don't see them very often, but look at those that coloration right there. It reminds me in this particular shot right here of a uh, bald-faced hornet. Those black and white giant hornets that we see here in the United States. Giants at least compared to the other species we see here. Here's this another small nymph. And uh, we'll take a look at these black tiger hissers. Now, the tiger hissers, the same species as these, um, they're typically black and white striped. They're just really, really beautiful. Um, but these black tiger hissers, they're uniformly black. You can see some of the paler intersegmental margins there showing a sort of orange. Um, that's a little bit unusual in specimens. Uh, maybe this one down here is a better example of what they typically look like. Well, you can really see the, these ones are all kind of older and perhaps a, a bit fat and happy, <laughs> but uh, you can see that they're reproducing in here rather well. Put you back down here, buddy. Gonna hiss for us a little bit. So, and then, oh, Email was getting pretty hissy. So that's my hissing cockroach collection. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.